like how, like how I was firing a blue shell or whatever the equivalent is. Hello and welcome. This is uh, the Seventh Sense, episode two. It is the seventeenth of December, two thousand sixteen. My name is Zane Friedman. My name is Ashley. Uh, Ashley, what surname withheld? I said your surname at the end of the previous oh, episode. Fuck, did you? Yeah. Oh, shit. All right, that's okay. Uh, yes. Yeah, so this is the Seventh Sense, where we make goofs on the stupid stuff that some people believe. Yep, we apply skepticism to uh, semi-real things. We apply semi-real skepticism. (laughs) So we start off with uh, horoscopes, like we do in every episode. As we will in every episode. You have to establish a tradition at some point. (laughs) Maybe maybe one day in the far future there will be people making fun of our traditions. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> They'll make fun of our use of horoscopes, which was ironic. Let's just make that clear. Well, when horoscopes are inevitably proven right, then we will be made fun of very harshly. That's true. I don't know. History won't smile upon this show. <laughs> it says it says so right here in my horoscope. All right, I'm a Scorpio. Ego clashes are a possibility today, especially if you're in the presence of a strong personality. Oh, fuck, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, this, this episode is doomed. You possess considerable depths yourself though they may be hidden to most of the world. Someone's bold, brash mannerisms might really rub you the wrong way, and arrogance will really set you off with an exclamation point. I like that. It's like reading an Enid Blyton book. (laughs) There's a lot of energy. But why not just let them have their fun? (laughs) Maybe they're feeling a little insecure, and they need the attention. I mean, I don't know. That's that's almost enough to make me a believer. (laughs) Okay, okay, I'm a cancer. Um, extra energy burns within you today, but if you have a jam- a day jam-packed of interactions of other- with other people, you're likely to feel worn out by evening. There's only so far that a cosmic energy boost can take you! Exclamation mark. In the meantime, use it for all it's worth. If you have a presentation to make, draw people into your corner. The same goes if you're meeting someone new. Be yourself, vividly. That's so- I mean, they're always vague, but this is vaguer than usual. That's- yeah, that's pretty impressively vague. You are a human. You contain chromosomes. (laughs) By a Kelly Fox astrologer, by the way. Oh, so I was using the Sydney Morning Herald. Yeah, I am too, actually. Oh, wow. Because the other one wouldn't load. That's a coincidence. It's a coincidence you think that the uh, astrologer might have known ahead of time. (laughs) It's spooky, isn't it? That, That we would use the third result on Google. There's a little there's a little star rating, like on Amazon, on this page, and it has a one out of five. What's your intensity rating? Where is that? Oh shit! Eighty-four percent. Fuck. What is yours? Fifty-five percent, and my uh, my mood my mood is gleeful. <laughs> so eighty-four percent. Suck it. I'm like the. Uh, this is like my baseball card stats. <laughs> my power level is eighty-four percent. Scorpio. My keywords are what the doctrinaire <laughs> doctrinaire doctrinaire imperative that's a word i've never heard of doctrinaire oh really you haven't heard that that's somebody who follows doctrines very closely well that's not what we're doing here anyway my keywords are doting and impressive and uh i don't dote but i i do impress the ladies you don't impress let, let the, the listeners decide so today's topic do you want to do you want to take this okay 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 get this Bible codes. Bible codes. So, um, Torah codes. Oh, Torah codes. Yeah, they have a, a few names. Torah codes, Bible codes, Quran codes. Well, yeah. I mean, that's from a different text. So Bible codes and Torah codes are from the same text. Do you think there's a, like a book of Mormon codes too? I mean, logically it would follow. You know, I don't know. Unless it's like blasphemous. I don't know. It's written on your underwear. I mean, there's probably a Harry Potter code, really. Yeah, so you could, yeah, so the methodology that they use, which is is very spotty, you could really apply to, you know, Ikea catalogs. You could, and people do. How Bible codes work is that they are believed to be a way of divining a secret hidden meaning or secret hidden messages that have been encoded into the original text of the Torah or the Bible. And basically what you do is you... um, get you know a certain passage or a number of passages or the entire text and you arrange it into a grid and you try and locate uh you know keywords or phrases say you know war apocalypse you know whatever and you can kind of find these terms if you look for long enough 
They're in fact really inevitable. You can find anything given enough noise. And if you keep uh, skipping a fixed number of letters, which is exactly the method that they employ. Yeah, by an equal distance. So there's a pattern. And then when it's arranged into a grid, there are kind of like, I guess, like uh, ratings of adjacency. So if if you find another keyword, however close... Makes it more persuasive or something. Yeah, however close it is, literally in proximity, <laughs> in the grid, the supposedly the more legitimate the claim yeah. is. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, if there was just one reference to Obama, who would take that seriously? But if there's, like, you know, Obama and Antichrist or whatever yeah, <laughs> nearby, yeah. then, you know, then... then. But what about on, on my tattoo, where I've got a picture of Obama and underneath it says Antichrist? Like, that's very convincing <laughs> when I show that to people. That's going to be so out of date. That's going to date you so much to this, to this decade. Anyway, yeah, so I'm just looking at an example that I got um, from, a, from a YouTube video with... Uh, I guess, whatever the the name is for the people who do this, called Richard Shaw. Credit where credit's due. Anyway, so it has, like, sort of a word pattern here, and there's Obama, there's um, Israel, Iran. I mean, you can see the motifs because it's always, like, you know, uh, Christian fundamentalist concerns, that sort of thing. So it's always stuff about Obama. A uh, war starts, fret, Elijah, I don't know what the Elijah pop means. Elijah would, obviously. So anyway, we have all these, all these, you know, whatever catch terms that they enjoy, and yeah, I mean, you just they just spend time <laughs> looking for patterns, and really, the interesting thing is how arbitrary the grid seems as well, because there's. No... I mean, it's a hundred percent arbitrary. Oh, it's all arbitrary, really. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the the grid, the the whatever Hebrew letters that make up this um this specific space. Like the 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 width that they go to, how many lines? I mean, it's you could just rearrange it and it wouldn't look as good. I mean, the other thing is, can't you write Hebrew horizontally and vertically as well? Oh, I don't know. That's what these pages seem to imply. I don't really know though. I think you can. So I mean, it's even when you use the Bible, it's even further removed from any possible legitimate interpretation because English can only be written left to right. It just makes it. It's so artificial when you look at these uh, arrangements of grids on Wikipedia that pull from the Bible, like the the New Testament, or an English translation, rather. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of things there. Like, there's also the fact that obviously most most of the people looking at these things probably can't read Hebrew, so that also gives you a lot more scope. Like, look these. You know, these letters correspond to pronunciations. How do we know it's not like Obama or something? You know what I mean? Like, it's just it's Are you a lot suggesting of... that his true name is Obama? <laughs> well, you know, I mean, uh, I, if we saw his birth certificate. We like... would know for sure, right? Of course. <laughs> we would know if there's an umlaut on top of that O. And, uh, <laughs> I wonder if there are like. You know, then we could deport him to Germany where he belongs. You know? I wonder if there's like a. You could do a Bible code on someone's birth certificate. <laughs> Antichrist. I mean, you know, it's it's all over there. It's easy when their middle name is Antichrist. I wouldn't mind getting some Obama speeches and searching them to how many times I can you know, call him an Antichrist. Man, I mean, this has been a pretty disappointing presidency for Antichrist aficionados. Anyway, let's not get political. <laughs> There's got to be millions of fucking Bible Bible codes like littering the past of things that didn't happen. Well, I actually did some some independent research, um, which, oh, yeah. Uh, so I went to a website that allows you to uh, use their proprietary uh, search engine to look up phrases and keywords. Um, and it will match it to somewhere in the Bible, and it'll even tell you the verses that I u- that it pulls from. So like mm, the first- That's another relevant thing. When they see the verse like means something... I don't know, it's a really good way to use your cognitive bias, really, because, you know, when when the verse refers to war or, you know, something happening to the Israelites or something like that. Because war is so infrequent in the Bible. So when it crops <laughs> yeah. up, you know, you know it's significant. Yeah, it's, 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 everyone in the Bible loves peace, especially God. <laughs> so, you know. Wasn't John Lennon, like, the main character in the Bible? He's the main guy from the second one. I mean, in my revisionist Bible for my new Christian cults... Uh, and he was killed. We talked about John Lennon twice now. Oh, I mean, I intend to talk about it in every episode. So. I yeah, I wake up and I say a little <laughs> prayer to John Lennon. And I light some incense and then I get back in bed. Obviously, because <laughs> that is what he will us to do. Of course, you know, yeah, he wouldn't he wouldn't encourage you to do like you know stuff you don't want to do, like getting out of bed. Mm. 
Anyway, yeah, I mean, you know, he was also just taken away from us by dark forces. And he also he also died for us since I'm trying you know, I have a conspiracy theory about this which will be censored. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know but you know, I wanna imply it, but you know, just get close enough to avoid the censor. In the spirit of uh, anagrams, I will give you the last name of the true perpetrator of John Lennon's assassination in reverse. Oh no. Oh my god. Wow. That is a, that's a fucking one of those words that go the same way. That's also like spooky and proves her guilt. <laughs> it proves a lot of things. <laughs> I mean, I call it the Ono code. <laughs> so I found some Bible codes. I found two. Uh, there are surpri- like some are surprisingly common. Like I looked up seven cents and stuff like that. Um, mm-hmm. And there's like, are we there? Are we in the Bible? Yeah, were we predicted? You know, did God know? But there's like 800 matches is the thing. It's like not special. It's, yeah, is, is the thing that you realize if you play with this for like more than 10 minutes. There are some really, really common ones. So you have to... But have you looked at like the, the verses and it's like, you know, like whatever, two, two guys <laughs> will create a podcast. Two wise men. <laughs> yeah, two wise men will broadcast their voices across uh, the world mm. or something. I don't know. I mean, I just, I just can't believe that such a momentous event wouldn't have been foretold. Well, I mean, it is, like, a hundred, two hundred times, and then when you, I don't want to look through all the verses, because I don't, I don't have enough time for that, you know, on the, on this planet. Yeah, well, uh, you don't, you don't take this seriously enough, so, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, but I did, I mean, something I do, I do take very seriously is I, I found one result for the phrase Ellen Page nude pics bush. Yep. Yep. Um, so let's bring that to the top of Google <laughs> immediately. In fact, let's Google it. Let's nah, 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 nah. Um, why use why use Google when we have the only repository of knowledge we need, the Bible? <laughs> How many bush references do you get if you search the Bible? Like, it's got to be full of them. Yeah, see, there are there are like suggested searches. It tells you like <laughs> in your search at the bottom. It's like here are some t- some words you can add to the end of your search, and they're things like war, God, Jesus, love, end, and ruin. And I was already thinking like, well, if I'm including bush, it's probably by the sounds of those <laughs> all of those things. Um, anyway, so the the just for reference for those at home who want to find this, um, the website is biblecodewisdom.com, and the verses that it uses are the book of the prophet Jeremiah, fifty thirty five, fifty thirty six, thirty seven, thirty eight, and thirty nine. Mm, sounds sounds meaningful when you reference them. Uh, I also found um, they did the monster mash, <laughs> and there are ten results. Uh, it's that's found independently ten times. Mm. And and lo, the tribes did the monster mash as they received the laws. <laughs> the laws of the graveyard smash. <laughs> it caught on in a flash. <laughs> <laughs> they caught on in a flash and, and still dominate people's lives this day. So how popular are Bible codes like among among people? Is it like I think it's pretty fringe. I don't get the impression that it's that common. I mean, it would require people to really, really read their Bible. So that alone is actually pretty fringe. <laughs> well, you don't find it manually, I guess. Yeah, so here's the other thing. I mean, you requ- it requires very specialized software <laughs> to, to find and decode. Yeah, exactly. Until the mid-80s, you know, there was no real way to do this with any efficiency. And in the mid-80s, a rabbi coded a, coded a piece of software that did this for you. So, you know... Yeah, there were God assumed certain means. There were people who were doing this kind of thing before the eighties. I think. Yeah, you know, you couldn't find all of the nine eleven predictions before the eighties. You, you certainly couldn't find anything about Ellen Page's bush. That's why I'm glad to live in the two thousand tens. You don't even need to get this obscure program now. We have websites that let you search the Bible for nude pics. <laughs> Another piece of trivia, I think, worth that's worth mentioning, is that people. Or at least, uh, what's his name? Jesus. <laughs> Moses. Fuck. Let me just look this up. This is important. Moses was Jesus before Jesus was Jesus. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess he was sort of a remake, you know, if Disney existed back then. Anyway, Rips, uh, who's one of the pioneers of bi- of Bible code finding, that's his surname, I guess. Um, specifically, it says not to use this to make predictions. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel, I feel like there's sort of a, you know, a vested interest in preventing, in preventing that sort of behavior. Because, uh, well, I don't know. If anybody wants to guess how many Bible codes actually come true, you know, among the few that, you know, you can retrospectively find, 
I think it might harm its credibility. So, but that's my my theory. I mean, it's really it's really like any prediction. Yeah, it's easy to kind of massage a vague prediction to fit any uh, subsequent occurrences. Well, with with computers, it's really easy as well. Well, yeah, I mean, you can literally just scour a, a document for hundreds and hundreds of arrangements of words, and so inevitably, some will resemble reality. Yep, yep. So I hope somebody will do that with a transcript of this podcast. That we won't release, so you'll have to go to that effort. But we know that it'll be worth it. Yes, and I, I go on record to say that this should not be used for predictions. Why not? If you actually find something that'll happen, then this 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 could really raise our listener base. To two. The, the podcast that predicted a particular assassination, or like a really hot day, <laughs> like a two-headed dog or something. You just predicted three things, and they all better come true. Yeah, I know. Oh, they, shit, you just I mean, made three very. Oh fuck! Now I know what Rips's point was. Oh yeah. fuck! So th- some people speculate that ancient Hebrew, uh, ancient rabbis, sort of coded secret predictions into the Torah. Does that seem at all plausible to you or anyone? I, mean, I thought it was. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think like you know the. Oh yeah, well, actually, we don't know who wrote the ancient like Bible and whatever. So. I mean, it doesn't seem plausible, no, because there's so many inconsistencies in the Bible that you'd think they would deal with those first <laughs> yeah, that's true. before, you know, going to any super, super obscure hundreds of references to Obama. Maybe that's why. The only way that they could arrange it such that the secret messages could be properly hidden is to include a bunch of, you know, paragraphs that contradict other paragraphs. What I like, sorry, I'm looking at this image again, what I like is that, you know, Israel, I mean, obviously it's mentioned all the times in the Bible, but it's not coded here, so it's just like, you know... They just found a page that mentions it, yeah. you know, as as hundreds of pages do. So yeah, they should have resolved like all the all the differences between what Jesus says and all that. So yeah, that would have been the logical thing to do. And also, there's lots of different authors, so why would they all come to the same conclusion? It's a bit weird. It's a good. It's a good question. We should look to the Bible for answers. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you know, it, it self justifies like all good texts. The U.S. Constitution self-justifies. Nobody says that's not divine. So this is the U.S. Constitution straight up declares certain things to be self-evident and just leaves it at that. I mean, that no one's scrutinizing it, but they should. Well, does that fly? Well, yeah. I mean, we all agree anyway in the modern era that people are equal. They didn't agree that with that back then, though. So that's a bit weird. But anyway, that is true. But we'll have to we'll have to tackle the U.S. Constitution <laughs> in another episode. <laughs> It'll be a a fucking gun-filled episode. <laughs> we'll fire words at each other. We'll talk about which ones should be removed, like the women's suffrage provision. <laughs> they should replace that with another gun provision. Yeah. Like, you know, make it illegal not to have guns. Make the president a gun. <laughs> you know what they should do is, like, uh, you know when the Joker fires a pretend gun at Batman and a little flag with boom <laughs> comes out? Should be those, but little constitutions. Like, boom will be the new provision of the Constitution. <laughs> no, I just... I mean, that's, that's a very backward interpretation of what I said. No, I mean... I don't know, I don't know. Look, I'm, I'm cut out for Bible interpretation. The flag will bear the Constitution. The flag that comes out of the gun barrel will be a little Constitution. But what's what's the point of that? What utility does that serve? It'll be fucking kick-ass. Kick-ass. Yeah. They already have screaming eagles and waving flags and Hulk Hogan and all that. They're pretty kick-ass as it is. The three pillars of American government. <laughs> the judiciary, which is uh, WWE. Uh, the, the, leg- the legislature, which is the gun. <laughs> the judiciary it already sounds like a guy from WWE who would like have a snake on his mask. <laughs> it's me, the judiciary, and I'm going to break you. <laughs> the judge. He has like a big fucking mouth. He has a he gavel, yeah. <laughs> It's like I find for the defense and like wrecks the fucking other guy. He grabs, he like picks the guy up and he yells like "By the people, for the people!" and then throws him into the audience <laughs> to be ransacked. Oh, because those are the people. Yes. Well, so much subtext gone. This is the we're creating a Bible right here. <laughs> this will be studied in the future. I don't know. I do know. That's that's the problem actually with the internet. Like, there's so much stuff that you know nobody will get their just des- their their due. They just desserts. That was very biblical. You went brimstone there. What have we talked about since we last actually mentioned the topic? Hulk Hogan, <laughs> fictional wrestlers, the Joker. America. I mean, what else is that? America. Talking about these days? Anyway, returning to Bible codes. There's such, also such a thing as Quran codes. I, they might be exactly the same. I, I have a feeling they're exactly the same. 
Yeah, well, you know, you can't... If you have a holy book, you can't be without a code. This became very hip in the 70s. This was like bell-bottom jeans. <laughs> Contemporary discussion uh, really sort of began in 94. So they were doing it for a while, but it, it at first entered into sort of uh, a stage of greater awareness when a group of people published a paper, which was called Equidistant Letter Sequences in the Book of Genesis. Well, yeah, that's when science started to lose credibility. <laughs> that's when it all began. Well, it's still technically, I mean, it is science. They're not necessarily, you know, advancing the theory that Bible codes are true and real. It's just that, you know, there is a statistical phenomenon at play here, and it is worth investigating. Mm -hmm. Well, you can actually appreciate how many times it's been responded to as, like, science in operation. Unlike the Bible, which, you know, wasn't published in such a way and won't be scrutinized in that way. You know, not, like, people don't take the Bible seriously. Mm, yeah. So it should have been published in Nature, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> you know, paper one, Genesis, and people would be like, well, this doesn't really... <laughs> I guess it's not really good science. They should publish it in, uh, not in New Scientist, but Old Scientist. Old, <laughs> new Roman, new alchemist, new druid. It actually began in the 13th century. Spanish Rabbi Bacha Ben Asher may have been the first to describe an equidistant letter sequence in the Bible. Over the following centuries, there are some hints that the ELS technique was known, but few definite examples have been found from before the middle of the 20th century. They didn't have info wars to spread such ideas back then, so yeah. <laughs> you know. So they couldn't be like, you know, Bible codes predict, you know, like, some ra some random king will be assassinated. It's always assassinations. Nobody ever predicts anything benign using the Bible. And it would be hard to, I suppose. Well, because it's 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 also sensationalized, you know. It's like, they're not, yeah, they're not going to predict, oh, you know, Obama, you know, stubs his toe. <laughs> also is the Antichrist. Like, they're going like, to they're gonna lead with the stubbing the toe part. That's not gonna get you any eyeballs. Yeah, I mean, you know, if if it if it doesn't make if it doesn't make your you know angry tabloid rag thing, why would you have it in the Bible? It's got to be up to that level. <laughs> the journalistic standards of uh, of John. The standard of like truthwars dot biz. Truthwars. Blacktruth dot ru. <laughs> New Patriot News. So yeah, the practice did not. It sort of remained quite unknown, or at least fringe. Uh, until the 1980s. Until so it became highly convenient to do this. Uh, it was Israeli schoolteacher Avraham Oren came to the attention of Elia Rips, who you mentioned. Then they went on to do a lot of modern tests. And determined it was completely legit. Yes. <laughs> well, that's what this hearing has gathered today to determine. Uh, anyway, in about uh, 1985... These two decided to carry out a formal test known as the Great Rabbi's Experiment, <laughs> which sounds like a detective novel. Well, you know, the outcome has got to be good from whatever that is. You wouldn't expect anything like, you know, anything less than great from a Great Rabbi Experiment. <laughs> Mediocre Rabbi Experiment. Wouldn't, like, a, an experimental rabbi, wouldn't he just, like, <laughs> eat, eat a bit of pork? No, that's, that, that's going outside of our scientific limits. Science can't touch pork. <laughs> Anyway, the point is that uh, we deem this to be true. <laughs> you know, all all indications, all all like scientific papers, other than the bad ones, say that it's correct. So yeah, you should immediately resort to websites to predict I don't know, your love life or assassinations. It's mostly assassinations, really. Will you be assassinated? You can find out. Mm. Or it's like a. Like a Facebook quiz. Which character from the Bible are you? <laughs> the one that gets assassinated. Are you the bitchy one? Are you the slutty one? Are you the independent <laughs> one? Find out. Which apostle are you? Actually, I'm sure there's such a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, new topic of the episode. Is that a real quiz on the internet? <laughs> I hope I'm Judas. I don't know. That's... It is! Yeah, of course there is. I mean, how could this, how could this not exist? If it didn't exist, we'd create it in the next episode, so yeah, it would have to. <laughs> Alright, we have to do this now. All right, this is all right, the yeah, new topic be... of the episode. Because <laughs> this is too great. This will be our this will be our ending, which we'll just hope if you get Judas, there's a glitch in design of the quiz. Oh, well, that's not what I'm hoping. So I am on crosswalk.com slash culture slash infographics slash uh, quiz 
Which of the twelve disciples are you? I also am. Hopefully, this dodgy flashed quiz will actually work. I hope I get like a million viruses. <laughs> now, the first question is: Do you have any siblings? And there are two options: yes and no. And the pictures are a dog covered in lots of other small animals a and a cat sitting on its own. No, I don't. Well, I do. Pick a book of the Bible. <laughs> All right, Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. Okay, I see where this is going. <laughs> I th- I'm surprised. I'll be surprised if it doesn't just say which is your favorite apostle. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I guess I'm more of a Luke guy. Yeah, I was going to pick Luke. T- I'll go with uh, I'm John. Luke warm on this. Uh, shit. How would you describe yourself? Oh goodness. Impulsive, optimistic, forgiving, ambitious. <laughs> like, of course, you have to choose ambitious. Faithful. <laughs> I mean, if you want to be Judas, you have to choose ambitious. The skeptical is in here, though. Oh, skeptical. Sure. Yeah. Well, you can choose more than one. All right. Well, I'm I'm skeptical and I'm fiery, rebellious. Yeah. Yep. I'm quiet. No. Oh, okay, let's I'm impulsive, that. and I'm forgiving. Well, nobody's gonna admit to being greedy. Come on. Greedy people don't think they're greedy. But anyway. That's true. Okay. Right. What are your skills? Speaking, travel experience, leadership, economics, diplomacy, whatever I can do to help. <laughs> I think speaking. That's so that's so scrappy. I like that one. <laughs> Your ideal career, fisherman, scholar, accountant, IRS agent. IRS. That's like the US tax. The bottom one is, um, pass. I don't know, fisherman, that'd be awesome. That's your ideal career? Yeah, I mean, you know, have you read The Old Man in the Sea? You're literally a scholar. That is literally, you've spent six years. Oh, shit, was that an option? Fuck. Scholar was the second option. I'm going to go with pass, because, yeah, okay. Describe your approach to ministry. <laughs> Loud and hands-on, more relational. It's all about politics. I prefer writing. Yeah, you know, you do a fire and brimstone speech. Nah, I prefer writing, even though I don't have any approach to ministry because I'm not a minister. As you, as you might pick up from this. My approach to ministry is to just close this page, I think. Yeah, but if I was, I guess I would be loud and hands-on. Yeah, well, you make it all about politics, as you do. Because that's not, it's not about religion, really. It's not about the thing that people are coming to church for. Which virtue is most important to you? Love, courage, righteousness, or faith? It's got to be righteousness. Love. Yeah, nah. Righteousness. Righteousness, motherfucker. Okay. Oh, shit, I'm not going to get Judas if I keep doing that. Which miracle would you like to have witnessed? <laughs> Lazarus resurrection, the transfiguration, feeding of 5,000, the calming of the storm. I'm not familiar with most of these. Well, clearly, clearly the one that gets you wine, obviously. What's the I mean, transfiguration? <laughs> you get pissed after Jesus' miracle. What's the transfiguration? I'm not actually sure. Is that not water into wine? Or? They're not all that, you know. Calm down. Well, yeah, I know, I know. Well, we know Lazarus. He brings a guy back to life. That's probably the one I would want to witness, you know. Transfiguration. He turns, doesn't he turn, like, shit into, like, bread and fish or something? I don't know about calming of the storm. I don't think he turns shit into anything. Well, you know, Zane, I'm just being colloquial. Jeez. Okay. <laughs> I'll do as I will. Ah. Uh, uh, okay, yeah. That's the one reference for the episode. You've used it up. Yeah, I'm going to go Transfiguration, because I think it involves uh, alcohol. Okay. Uh, choose a ministry destination. It's really a strange one. Uh, this is getting a really, like, inside uh, religion. Probably go with India. Yeah. Ethiopia would be cool. Oh, Iran, yeah, let's live on the edge where you get fucking executed <laughs> for it. Or at least locked in prison. Sign up to receive a fun weekly quiz. Skip. I am uh, Zebedee. Wow. Who is Zebedee? No idea. Even the even the site doesn't know. God. Yeah, you'd think any minister would know who the um who the apostles are. He even gave you and your brother the nickname the Sons of Thunder. How cool is that? That's, yeah, that's cool. Pretty, that's you do dope. sound like wrestlers now. <laughs> The Zebedee Smackdown. I was Thomas. Wow. Doubting Thomas. People may label you a doubter, but don't mind. That's so appropriate. You've seen how hasty words and half-truths can damage the faith, so you make discernment a priority. You seek to faithfully follow Christ in a way that both honors and glorifies him. When the road ahead gets uncertain, Christians can count on you to lead the way. Zebedee was a fisherman, so if I'd actually chosen what I, what I genuinely am, which is... He's a scholarly person. They might have got something else. These are pretty, like, transparent, because I just picked Skeptical and it assigned me Thomas, and you picked Fisherman. I also choose, chose Skeptical. So but maybe right. Fisherman overrides Skepticism. Yeah, well, it seems that way. The moment you never noticed in a Charlie Brown Christmas. Don't start reading stuff on the side. We're in the middle of doing a podcast. <laughs> I don't know, like, I'm a Charlie Brown fan. I know, but... <laughs> 
<laughs> this is the miracle of editing. Like, I know you'll fix this anyway. I think we're making it easy to cut out, though. You know, like, we're not saying defamatory things or anything like that. We're constantly alluding to, you know, Yoko Ono being responsible for John Lennon's death. <laughs> well, that's legal, you know, as, as your counsel. Like, I'll... You know, you can elude that. <laughs> and the reason is because it's true. You're not a scholar anymore. You're a fisherman now. I'm not going to listen to well, a yeah. fisherman. I'm not going to lay my, you know, power of attorney on the ha- into the hands of a fisherman. Well, you know, I'll tell you where the best catches are. And the best catches are in the, uh, the Yoko Ono killed John Lennon bay. Hello again, Ashley. So we're back. We've reconvened later in the day with the express purpose of saying, you know, I think that's really all we have to say about, um... Bible codes and also an unrelated internet quiz. Well, I mean, Bible codes set themselves up for that, you know, by having so little depth and so little in the way of justifications. Anyway, um, yeah, so this is another this is a second episode in a row that's kind of short. Yes, but, you know. this episode is a sign off, so we tick a formality box. The pre, unlike the previous one where you had to edit in, like, uh, oh, by the way, this is the end. That makes it more ad hoc, so it also has like a. It has cred. Well, it's like a, it's like a, you know, a video on CCTV. Where two people record a shit podcast. <laughs> anyway, um, you can uh, follow us on twitter.com slash seventhsensepod, all spelled out in letters, and facebook.com slash seventhsensepod, again, all spelled out in letters. Find us on, actually, uh, we have a podcast host, it's uh, seventhsensepod.podbean.com, and you can send us an email at... Seventh Sense Pod at gmail dot com, and if you want to find me on Twitter, I am at Zane Z A N E J the letter J Friedman F R I E D M A N, and uh, find these on YouTube as well. We're uh, mirroring these on YouTube. Anyway, in the future, we may discuss uh, the Georgia Guidestones, which we mentioned in the first episode. Yeah, you mentioned them in the first episode, and I think I accident I said that I didn't know what they were, but I wasn't. I definitely know what they are. That was a mistake because you've undermined your credibility from the start, Zane. And you know, we're trying to we're trying to deliver this from a place of expertise, and you know, you should never admit to not knowing things. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the place from expertise where we constantly refer to Yoko Ono having assassinated John Lennon, and also we constantly refer to Wikipedia. But you know, that's because that's the most expertise having website on the internet. Yeah. Wikipedia is really the third member of this podcast. It is, in fact, the backbone of the podcast. But yes, I apologize for misleading everyone about my knowledge of the Georgia Guidestones. I, re- I should have consulted the podcasting Guidestone for that uh, protocol. Which says... It says, never fuck with your audience, or you betray the art of podcasting. Ah, oh, fuck. Isn't that what we've been doing this whole time? Bye! I know, one day we'll find a religion so absurd that it'll give us, like, a year of material. (laughs) Maybe we should create a religion, just to, you know, like a false flag kind of thing.